Hi, and welcome to The Caption Life, a show for the most casual and dedicated fans of comics and a member of the Comic Watch family. I'm your host, Sean. Join me and discover what the world of comics and graphic novels have to offer. From one-on-one interviews with industry professionals, roundtable discussions with passionate fans, and reviews on the latest comics, TV shows, and movies. Now let's dive right on in. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, thanks for checking us out. And if you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. Now that 2022 is coming to a close, it's always a time for reflection to see how this year went for all of us. And just like every year, we all have best moments and not so great moments. We started a tradition on this show last year to do a reflection episode of the past year. And to help us do a reflection of the past year, I've invited my former co-host to come on the show to share his best and worst of 2022, and we hope to make this an annual tradition, so please welcome back on the show, Kevin Stoliker. He is a longtime comic book and superhero fan, and as a public educator, he is constantly finding new ways to weave his love of pop culture into the classroom, and as I mentioned before, he is a co-founder and former co-host of the Caption Life Podcast. Kevin, welcome back, man. Man, I finally got the I finally got the intro that I've always been wanting. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've always been jealous of everyone's yeah, intro. Yeah, every time we every time we write an intro for a guest, it was always like, man, I wish somebody would talk about me that way. Yeah. And now your dream has come through. You can check yeah. that off your bucket list now. I right? had to I, I guess I had to quit the show and come back in order to, yeah. <laughs> That's what to make my dreams come true. But you didn't quit, man. You just took a high. No, I, did, I had to take a step back. <laughs> I had to yeah. take a step back. I lots of stuff going on personally and professionally. Uh, so I had to take a, had to take a break and it's been an extended break. Uh, but I, I do hope that in 2023, I can come back and, and guest on a couple of episodes and, and talk with you. Cause it's one of my favorite things to do in the world. Yeah, no, we, we've had fun. And, and, you know, just like you said, it's just, you know, taking a break from, you know, everything that's been going on. You and I have been constantly texting each oh, other. Yeah. You know, it's not like anything has soured or anything like that. This is this has been, you know. No, we're still besties. Yes, exactly. So um, and one of the things that you had mentioned, I can't remember. I like there was something I was going to say and I can't remember <laughs> what it was now. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into uh, what we start off with with every guest. And, you know, I don't think we had a chance to talk about your comic book origin story, at least on an episode like this. I know we've talked about it before leisurely, but let's formally ask you, what is your comic book origin story? Yeah, so uh, I was a huge fan of, um, you know, like, in, I, I was, I'm the kid of the, of the early 80s, so I was a big fan of, of all the, the favorite pop culture things that we had, like Transformers and mm-hmm. ninja turtles and gi joe and things like that uh thundercats especially mm-hmm. in the late 80s but um when i was like seven or eight years old i went to uh visit metropolis illinois and was the, which is the home of superman and and since I, i've since been able to go back and take my son but uh, i fell in love with with superman at a very early age mm-hmm. um my last name translates to steel corner so the the man of steel has always had a special place in my heart and i know we've talked to other guests about um like superman for the quest for peace like played (laughs) on a loop in my house and so um it was just a big part of it was a big part of my childhood and uh the summer before fifth grade was really when it started to ramp up because i i would go to the library and i would check out these collected editions of like superman comics and then um that was also the year that uh x-men uh the television the cartoon television show mm-hmm. uh came out and then um the x-men relaunched with jim lee's uh you know famous uh like five five different covers and so mm-hmm. um that really is what got me into uh, like comic readership and I, I i guess took a step back from it for a long time until i became an adult uh, and had money to burn like i had a disposable income and right. started collecting comics and in graphic novels and action figures and now i sit in a, a room full of them yeah uh, but it's just one of my it's one of my passions uh, and i love to be able to like share that with with other people but especially the kids that i teach uh because it becomes it becomes a, something that we can bond over and so helps you build that relationship and and you know i'm a big believer in 
they uh, uh, kids um, kids want to know how much you care before they care how much you know. So, right, right, yeah. Now you said when you became an adult, did that happen? Uh, you know, it's still a transitional process. <laughs> uh, I'm a work in progress. I right. somebody asked me somebody asked me at school the other day. I was a student was asking me a because uh, I was sharing a funny story. And, and my wife was laughing at me during the story. And um, Kathy routinely tells me, like, that's why I'm just destined to teach junior high, because I'm never going to grow up. <laughs> so. Both like, you know, as, as mentally and height wise. Yeah, don't, we, don't have to, we don't have to make fun of me. I'm average height. <laughs> well, and I only say that because I'm six foot six. Like everyone is smaller. Right. Compared to me, we right? look like we look the same size in the podcast and the <laughs> Zoom window. <laughs> you know, yeah. my my work had a holiday party um just this past Friday, and I decided to go in person for it. And we had so many new people on the team that that's all they talked about when they came and met with me. They're like, I did not realize how tall you are in person. And I'm like, Yeah, I need to somehow let people know that when I'm on Zoom, like when I introduce myself, like, hi, my name is Sean. And, you know, I do this. I'm also six foot six. So don't be disturbed when you see me in person for the first time, you know? Yeah, it's um, kind of, it's kind of off-putting. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I, I see, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it anymore because we've actually hung out together in person. Right. And so like, I'm, I, I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a big old teddy bear. You know, it's, I know like my height is intimidating for people, but it's like, I never, I've never been in a fight because of two reasons. One, I don't think people want to try to pick on a guy that's my size, but two is like, I don't want to fight anybody, you know, right. because I'm just way too Spe nice. Speaking of fights, Madden is nearly as tall as I am. So the countdown has become, has begun because <laughs> like we, we already agreed that when he reached the same height as me, uh -huh. um, that we, we would fight for dominance. So he's only got about an inch left. So uh, no kidding. Yeah. He, and he's in seventh grade now. Eighth, he's eighth grade. Oh, he's eighth. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I was six six when I was in eighth grade, so I haven't grown since then. So mm. I've always been like dominating the height in the classroom since like second or third grade because of that. Yeah. You <laughs> peak. You peaked in middle school. Yeah. Well, I guess. <laughs> I think technically I was six five, and then I hit six six when I was freshman. But it's like it's like a measly you know inch or half an inch. So yeah. Yeah. So I right. didn't really begin until you got that last inch. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and then, yeah, then, well, you know, what's funny is every, every time, you know, I turn a year older, like when I was 11, my shoe size was a size 11. And then when I was 12, my shoe size was 12. And then once I hit 15, like that's been like a, a weird change for me because I was always, you know, or I hit size 14 when I was 14 when I turned 15. I was expecting just to go up another shoe size, but I was still at 14. I'm like, well, this is weird. <laughs> so have you let me ask you a question. Have you ever been able to dunk a basketball? Uh when I was in high school, yes. Okay. Um you don't think you could go out there right now? No, absolutely throw down? not. No. No, because I'd give, well, give you 30 minutes to warm up. <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing is that when I was in high school, um, I barely had any hops. Like I couldn't really jump high. Uh -huh. um, so it took like a lot of effort and momentum for me to actually dunk, but I could dunk. So if, if I had like enough like momentum and I think around, if I started like not at the three point line, but like maybe around the, the free throw line, uh, if it was an arc, if I had a few steps, I can definitely dunk. Uh -huh. Um, but I mean, just barely, I just didn't have a huge vertical. So now as an so, adult and weighing like, you know, a hundred pounds more than I did in high school. <laughs> so what you're saying is if we played a, a game of pickup basketball, we'd both have the same number of dunks. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> all right. I can live with that. I can live with that. Uh, all right. So let's, let's talk about the best and worst of 2022. Um, so we have some categories of things that we're going to talk about in terms of what was our, we call it best and worst, but really we phrase it as what's our favorite and least favorite. Least favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just say best and worst because in terms of title and like the show art, um, it's hard to put favorite and least favorite in the title there. So mm -hmm. we just said best and worst. Um, so we have some categories that we're going to go through and talk about what was our favorite and least favorite. Uh, we have some listeners that also share there. So we're going to be reading those. Um, you and I have not shared what our favorite and least favorites are. So this is going to be the first time that we're hearing what the other person is saying, what right. their favorite and since, least favorite. And since I haven't been on the show for a few months, we haven't talked 
pop culture as much. Right. Yeah. So, like uh, some things we we text each yeah. other about stuff like that, like the whole breaking news of like James Gunn with the DC Studios and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah, but and Bob not... Chapik getting fired. That was oh my gosh, yeah, we were... <laughs> it was a joyous night in both of our houses. As soon, yeah, as soon as it happened, I remember texting him just like, "Guess what?" <laughs> yeah, we, we can get to that. We'll get into that later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's start before we get into those categories. Let's start with, um, and I'm no, I'm kind of throwing a wrench to you at this because I did not prepare you for this, so I apologize. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about our personal favorite and least favorite moments uh, okay. from the past year. So nothing to do with any of the genres that we're going to be talking about their topics, but just like personal moments that were great and not so great this year. So do you want to kick off first or do you want yeah, to kick sure, off? Cause you know what? I, I read the outline. Uh, oh, so you, so oh, okay. Gotcha. I, I, uh, <laughs> I saw it coming. Uh, I I've got two for me, probably um, uh, working on my classroom, like going, going back to being a, a full-time teacher and putting my classroom together and, mm-hmm. um, in decorating it the way that I have it decorated. And I don't know, maybe, maybe I can send you some pictures you can flash up on the screen for the YouTube viewers, but I have a a very, very like pop culture classroom with lots of movie posters and video game posters and, and things like that. So like getting Mm -hmm. to um, like have a space to express myself at school uh, was really, really great. And having like a, an admin team that supports like me doing that was, was really cool. Um, And then I guess the second one, if it was just a moment etched in time would be getting to watch the Astros win the world series with my parents. Uh, nice. Because, because we, uh, we, we put it up on the projector in the backyard and we sat out around the, uh, the fire pit and stuff. And we, we oh, I remember t- that. Together. Yeah. You sent me pretty, a picture of that. That was, really it was cool. pretty, it was pretty rad. So, yeah. uh, and my mom especially has been a baseball fan for her whole life. And, you know, it was like five years ago when the Astros won the world series the first time, but, uh, it was it was pretty great sitting out there as a family and 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 getting to share that. So those yeah. are my top two. I did not realize that the Houston Astros won the World Series this yeah, year. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I just don't pay attention to sports as much as I used to anymore, you know. So I yeah. just and I, did not same, even same that. for me. Same for yeah. me, with the exception of the Astros. And I and honestly, I don't have cable, so I don't I didn't get a chance to watch any games until like the playoffs. So right. Yeah. Well, and and, and of course I'll follow our local sports teams, which is like here in Indy, we only have two professional ones. All the rest are minor leagues. And so we got the Colts and Pacers. I haven't really followed the Pacers in a long time. And the Colts are just doing terrible this year. That I was my... gonna say we, we the Astros are great, but the other two teams we have here are the Rockets and the Texans, mm-hmm. and they might as well be minor league teams. So, because <laughs> they're not very good right now. Yeah. And I know this is not Houston, but you have the Dallas Stars. That's a hockey team. Oh, I don't even, I don't even, I didn't realize. Yeah. So, you didn't realize so, that? Well, I mean, I knew that the <laughs> Dallas Stars were a hockey team, but I don't follow hockey at all. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I haven't followed hockey in a while, but I mean, you know, my favorite sport is hockey. So, of course, I'm going to. Yeah talk about that sport with anybody but yeah yeah for big white people that can't jump hockey's where it's at <laughs> might as well just start checking them in the boards quack right. quack quack yeah <laughs> uh for me my best personal moments i have two of them actually um one is i went to the memphis comic expo this year and mm-hmm. kevin i gotta say i think you would enjoy this one because this one um is smaller than the ones that we have been to for PopCon and the D- dallas fan expo um but I really loved it for two reasons. One, I got to meet uh, my friends JT and Steven and um, in person. Like we've uh, known each other online through Twitter and we played Fortnite together and all that. But that was the first time I met them in person. So that was really momentous. Um, But this expo was very comic creator focused. Like all their panels were focused on the comics creators. And so I got to meet Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, Jonathan Glapian and had them sign my um batman court of owls uh hardcover trade paperback and it was really cool because it was it i didn't wait very long for to talk to them and they're very approachable and they're very nice and it's just really neat i've never been someone that had been interested in meeting the writers but Mm -hmm. this was just a really cool experience and i also got to meet mark wade who has done a lot of stuff um Mm -hmm. but when I went there and heard that Mark Wade was going to be there, he's known for writing the comic book issue where it has the panel of Matt Murdock wearing the I'm not daredevil sweater at the mm-hmm. Christmas party. So I got 
a sweater and like all the stuff to cosplay as that character. And I showed up at his table and he loved it so much that he got up and took a picture with me for that. And he signed my issue and stuff like that. So that was really cool experience. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. So that was, that was really cool. Like I, I was never would have thought that I would be interested in meeting some comic creators, but like seeing them there and um, just knowing that I'd had the opportunity, like it was actually a lot of fun. So that was the first time I've actually met comic creators in person. Uh, The second moment was, we took Riley to Disney World during the holidays for his birthday just recently. And, and so this this episode is going to air a little bit later, but we're actually recording this on December 12th. Um, so by the time this releases, actually, we have been a few weeks by then, but we took him there. We surprised him. He didn't know that we were going to take him until his actual birthday. And we told him that we were going to go to fly out uh, to Disney that day. And we got to see Disney World like with all the holiday decorations and got to go back because it's been a while since we gone there. And it was just a blast. And he had a whole world of fun. It was just really great to see him like very excited and seeing all the holiday stuff up at Disney World. So that was a really great moment for me. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's nothing like there's nothing like Disney World at the holidays. Yeah, Um, I love it It, with um, the exception of the crowds. So. Yeah. And, and honestly, the crowds weren't too bad when we went. I think it's because we went during kind of a low time for the holidays. Mm-hmm. There was one day where I think Hollywood Studios was a little bit packed, but all the other parks that we went to, it actually wasn't bad. Um, it was probably maybe normal for what it's been and all that. And so I felt like it was really manageable to kind of go around and, and not feel like you're you know running into people constantly. So, yeah. yeah so this was a good time to go. So uh, I have a friend who mentioned the other day about our, our kids going into high school next year, because like we had both like taken time off over the last two years at some point yeah. to go to Hollywood studio. I mean, to go to universal studios or Disney world during um, the school year. Mm-hmm. And we were like, she was like, but i'm not gonna be able to do that anymore because like you know, high school's too important he can't he can't miss school like that and i was right. like he can't go <laughs> can. i can just go without madden yeah <laughs> so. yeah well and that's one of the things that you know sarah and i had talked about is that this is a good time to do it because you know it's easier for him to get caught up on stuff that he's missed versus when he's in middle school and high school where mm-hmm. it's a lot more you know work to try to get caught up on you know a few days of being out and things like that so plus yeah. you can keep it in the reservoir like remember that time that we took you to Disney World at Christmas for your birthday like <laughs> you've got yeah. a pretty good you've got a pretty good kid we, yeah we i mean and we've kind of told him that as well too cuz you know every once in a while I'd be like oh am i getting this for your birthday i'm like kid you got to Disney for birthday you should not be asking for anything yeah. else <laughs> as long as you took a lot of pictures then you can always like remember this Huh? Yeah, <laughs> you remember this? You don't have to remember because I got receipts. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so yeah, we took a bunch of pictures and but yeah, he absolutely loved it and he had a blast doing it. So, it was a lot of fun. Okay. Um I did have on here like to share our not so favorite moments, but like, you know, with these being personal stories, I don't think we have to do that. Like I don't want to get into, you know, the the personal stuff of what wasn't our favorite unless you want to, but I'm like, I don't I don't no, know I if mean, I want to talk about that. I don't know if people want to listen to, you know, like our personal not so favorite moments of the year. Yeah, cue the cue the violin mu- music. Um, yeah, I yeah. mean Greg Abbott got reelected in Texas, so that's pretty low for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't go too far into the into the politics. <laughs> I know. Well, I, you know, my like I'll just touch on mine real quick, and then we'll move on to the categories and all that. But I mean, you know, this our our dog that's like probably the best dog that we ever had. He passed away this year, and that's been really hard for all of us and it's still impacting me just like how hard it is and you know i'm so used to having him around and i just i have moments where i'm like expecting him there and then he's just like oh so yeah i mean that's i guess you can i guess you can count yourself blessed when you when it's really hard to think of like what you didn't like about the year yeah i'll 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 say that you know yeah that's a good way of looking at it and my uh you know i definitely sympathize with you because i've I've been there before with with a beloved family pet. Uh, right. But yeah, I don't I hats off to you because I don't I don't have anything that's that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh well, let's go ahead and jump into the topics and what I want to do first is I want to recognize everybody who submitted their responses and I want to thank everybody. And so the people who submitted their responses for this episode is uh Joey from the So Wizard podcast. Uh, Rody, who is known as 
Real TBN Roads on TikTok. Um, Ken from the ODPH podcast, Joe Loves Comics, uh, Supnep, Carson, Bali Rock, B A A L I R O C K. And these are their usernames for social media as well, too. Um, Carson is actually, uh, I mean, his name is Carson 442 on TikTok. Uh, Matt, who is Bumpkins TV, who's been on the show as well, too. Uh, and Chris Tolley. Um, who is known as Spectacular CT on most things. So um, I just want to say thank you very much for everybody who submitted the responses, and we're going to read them as we're going through each of the categories. And so the first category we're going to hit up on is movies of 2022. So, Kevin, what was your favorite movie of this past year? You know, when we when we sit down to talk about these things, it's always really hard for me, but I, I had a hard time this year because... I just did not watch as many movies as I normally would. Oh, I don't really? know if it was like the end of um, like the end of the, or I guess the, the waning of the pandemic or, mm. or maybe that just not as much stuff interested me. Right. Um, but I, I, I only think I went to go see, went to the movie theater a handful of times. Um, and the, my favorite movie that I saw this year wasn't even one uh that i saw at the movie theater i will say my my top honorable mention was uh top gun maverick um, right yeah uh, that's one of the ones like i snuck away for like a 10 30 showing by myself because nobody else in my family was interested in seeing it and i was it was a really great story it was a lot of popcorn fun um and i really enjoyed it but mine was prey the the predator oh, prequel that came yeah. out on hulu yeah, uh, in August. Yeah, I, I really, really I've always been into like monster movies kind of like that. I'm not a big uh-huh. horror film fan, but Predator has always held a special place in my heart. I think probably when Carl Weathers lost his arm in the first one, when I was like, <laughs> saw that as a kid and it like completely like shocked me. But also like, how do they do that? Right. Um, yeah. But the story for Prey you know, it's it's set like in the the mid 1700s, and it, it involves a, a a Native American uh, young woman who is kind of like you know pitted against this um, what seems like a larger than ever predator. And the story is very good. the The action is very good. the um, The tension uh, in in the story is is very good. And then there's mm-hmm. a, a couple of really really good easter eggs and stuff that goes with it so that nice. was my that was my top for the year i gotta say i have not seen that movie yet but i've had i've heard good things about it um i just haven't gotten around to see it and i think part of it is i saw predator when i was a kid i just i never really cared for it you know i just it, it was like an interesting movie for me but it's one of those things like if i didn't see it again i wouldn't be you know crying myself to sleep for it It just it was it just it never hit for me like it did for a lot of other people so i think that's why i just never got around to it because i'm not uh like interested in the predator franchise but Mm -hmm. i've heard a lot of people say that it was a really well done movie and that they were really uh pleasantly surprised with how great it was as a movie so i think at some point i would like to watch i just haven't got around to seeing it so i will say that if you try to watch it like i did my best to recreate like a movie theater experience. Like I turned all the lights off mm-hmm. uh, and made it really, really dark and, and turned the sound up and everything. So I tried to recreate that experience and it paid off because it was a lot of fun to like watch it in the dark. Right. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, for me, it is a Christmas story Christmas. Oh, you really loved that one. I did like, and I think it's because, you know, Last year, we had talked about how my family grew up on a Christmas story. You and I did a live tweet of watching mm-hmm. it together. Um, when I heard they were doing a sequel, which technically they've had a couple of sequels. Like people don't realize this, but there was a, a Christmas story, too, that wasn't created by the same people. Um, and then I think there was like another one that took place over the summer or something like that. Um, but when I heard they were doing a sequel with the original, um, you know, Peter, Peter Billingsley, who plays Ralphie, mm-hmm. um, I was kind of worried because, you know, we're in that age where everybody's bringing things back because of nostalgism and they know that they can make money off of it. And this one, I was like, I don't know how they can top this. And and watching the movie, I wouldn't say they topped it, but they did meet that 
same kind of experience that the first movie had created for me because it was really well done for a sequel that wasn't too over the top with you know trying to recreate what made the first movie really good but it felt like a natural progression that it fit really well and so they still had um ralphie kind of doing the daydreaming sequences and things like that but they definitely updated the story and they you know continued the um the life of ralphie and, and his family really well that i thought as a story it did a fantastic job there's a couple of moments where i did tear up because i think they did a wonderful job of making of moving you as the audience member um which the first movie did not have that sort of thing like there's not a time where you felt moved to cry or anything like that and this one did and and it was just such a great movie and i i don't know because this came out you know just a few weeks ago that this is more recent in my mind but i think because i wasn't having any high expectation when i watch it and it just blew me away with how well it they how well of a job they did with it it just became one of my favorite movies that i think it's hard to really do a sequel well to do a sequel well after the first movie came out like mm-hmm. 30 years ago yeah i was gonna say like the, the three movies that we've mentioned as as being part of our favorites are all sequels or prequels <laughs> to movies that came out 30 something years ago yes yeah and, and those are the ones that's been you know, block, and it's not you know because of just the nostalgism. Because there have definitely been other movies that have been trying to use that and yeah, haven't like done the, well. I, the Hocus Pocus sequel comes to mind. I like that. I, oh, okay. I honestly, <laughs> I honestly like that one. I, uh, my, my wife, you know, also liked this. She said it wasn't as good as the first one, but you know, I thought I, I really enjoyed that one. I guess so. you have to like the first one to to even consider the second. Well, one. yeah, I'm not a big. I'm not. It was never a big Hocus Pocus <laughs> fan, so. Yeah, I mean, you don't hear people saying like, "Oh, I hated Terminator One, but I love Terminator 2. Like, it's like if you hated Terminator One, you're probably going to hate Terminator Two too. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so like, maybe that maybe when maybe like TV and film executives will hear this podcast and be like, "See, guys, we're on to something." Yeah, let's just keep making sequels to movies from you know 35 years ago. Maybe we'll get like another weird science movie. Oh my gosh, I hope or some, not. <laughs> or, or like a follow up to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, I know. And, and those are but those are really challenging. Like, that's the thing. Oh, no, is, it is very challenging. Yeah. And, and that's why Christmas Story Christmas was just, was on my list, because I feel like it was a huge challenge and they met that, you know. And so um, I don't think Top Gun Maverick was ever in danger of that because, you know, Tom Cruise is just, you know, he hasn't missed yet. Like anything that he's involved with, he does a great job of it. And so if he's involved with it, it's going to be an automatic mm-hmm. hit. Um, but I think a Christmas story Christmas because it's it has a cult following and there's just so much tied to it. I think it had a lot more at stakes and I think they just did a phenomenal job with it. So, all right. What is your least favorite movie of 2022? So here's the thing. Like I said, I didn't see a lot and right. I don't watch things and I've gotten better about not watching things that I won't like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say that there was a movie that I was really looking forward to. And I wanted to wanted to watch it and I didn't get a chance to see it in theater. So I hit it when it came to streaming and I was really disappointed in it. And that was the um, that was the secrets of Dumbledore. Oh, Uh, really? Yeah, I just I I thought it was lacking so much plot. Like Uh there was just it was just so much lacking in the story and the how the whole thing revolved around the sacred deer creature. Right. Um, like, I think they, they, they just went up a different direction where they tried to shoehorn. Um, uh, oh goodness. What's his name? The, 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 the beast. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, what's his name? Uh, Eddie Redmayne's character. Oh my gosh. Why am I forgetting yeah. his name? But oh, they I tried to too. shoe. They tried to shoehorn um, him into the, the story of, uh of Grindelwald and um and Dumbledore and I just I think he deserved better even though I can't remember his name. <laughs> well I mean you know it, it can't be a fantastic B story without beasts in it, right? And mm-hmm. so um and, and I get what you're saying with that because as much as I enjoyed the movie I also had like some issues with it. It just wasn't my least favorite for that came out this year. But um but I get what you're saying because there was the, Newt's the biggest... Commander, that's his name. Newt's yes, Commander. Newt's Commander, I... <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, like, my biggest issue of that movie was they didn't really address the fact that uh, Grindelwald looked different, you know? Yeah. 
because it's a new actor, yeah. you know, because Johnny Depp didn't return because, you know, of, of everything that's been going on. But I think they should have just at least either addressed it or something like that. And, and for them to just kind of, you know, ignore it, just pretend like everything is fine. Like at least say that, you know, he's trying out a new skin or a new face or whatever. New poly like, juice potion. Well, the other thing too, yeah. was that the lady that plays um, Newt's love interest. Yeah. Um, they completely wrote her out of the story with the exception, like of just a picture or maybe a brief at the she, end. She was because, in there at the end. And like in the audience, when they were doing the huge, when they were doing like the selection or whatever too. Yeah. And apparently she, apparently she came, she, uh, she was at odds with, I guess J.K. Rowling and film producers about like J.K. Rowling's stance on um, oh. some things that she I, I don't know I don't want to go deep down that that rabbit hole <laughs> but like yeah. yeah they they essentially wrote her out of the story and uh-huh. they didn't really explain like why she wasn't around and right. it just it didn't it didn't I mean they did but it was a cop out it yeah just didn't make it, it was just sense. like a slight little detail They're like oh she's busy you know like yeah so. Yeah. So I, I get where you're coming from. Like I, I enjoyed it, but I also had some issues with it. But for me personally, my least favorite movie of 2022 is Morbius. And I, I haven't seen it. So I bet you if you if you saw that, you would change your mind about which mind. was their least favorite. I bet you I would. Yeah. Like there's some things that were OK with it. Like I, I actually thought some of the visual effects was pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I know some people had some issues with it, but I thought actually it was it, I was kind of impressed with some of the things that they did. But overall, as a story like that was one of the few movies where I was in the theaters and I felt like I was falling asleep because it just wasn't catching my attention. So um, and then they re- then they re-released it in theaters and <laughs> like it, six and months flopped, later. And it flopped again. Yeah. You know, like, well, because the whole social media movement of like it's Mormon time and. And all that, like, it, I don't know what they thought was going to happen when they re-released it and everything, but I'm just like, what are you people doing? So, yeah, I, I'm, I really have a hard time trusting um, anybody that like runs a, a franchise mm-hmm. other than if you're not associated with Marvel at this point. Um, I know that's the and, thing. It, and even then I'm starting to like, like, mm, like yeah. with some of the, some of the ideas they have. Yeah, I mean, at least with the live action stuff they've been doing, right? Because the Miles Morales Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, they've done a phenomenal job with that. Yeah. But with the live action stuff, anytime it's been a Sony solo Marvel movie where it's not involved with the Marvel Studios or MCU, it just hasn't done well. Like Venom, Venom was okay. You know, I know it did fine at the box office. I thought as a movie, it did okay. Venom 2 was worse, in my opinion. Um, Morbius was not a good movie at all whatsoever. I'm hoping that with... um, What's the one with Dakota Johnson that's coming out? Um, Madam Web? Yes, thank you. Madam Web. I kept thinking Madam Spider, but I was like, no, that's not right. What is it? Um, Madam Web, that sounds like that might be okay like I, I think it might be decent just from all the things i've been hearing um not sure how craven the hunter is going to turn out since they're turning him into an ace ventura type of character so we'll see what they did like yeah i just i just haven't been happy with any of the sony solo marvel movies so yeah, yeah they're they're just reaching into their well of ip and hoping they pull out a winner and i yeah. i promise you that as long as they make as much money as like venom did they don't they're not going to sweat it I know that's yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Well, and and because they hold the rights to Spider-Man, I think they're doing these so they can continue doing the Spider-Man films mm-hmm. as well, too. You know, so they're just they got to use it, it or for, lose it. Yeah, exactly. So um, so here's what some of the listeners have said their favorite movies are. Um, nope. Which I have not had a chance to watch that yet. Have no, it's you? on Peacock and I want to I want to watch it uh, probably yeah. over Christmas break. Yeah, I've heard great things. I want to watch it, but I have not seen that yet um gardens of the galaxy holiday special did you like that i did i loved that one that was just irreverent and fun (laughs) and one of my biggest beefs with um with marvel shows and stuff right now is they keep teasing so much without giving us any like big reveals and you got a you got a really good one in that one so yeah yeah, this one was this one was uh, just a fun, campy holiday movie, which is exactly you know what it is. And I think because it's a holiday movie, it worked really well because mm-hmm. you weren't expecting it to be at the same level of 
cinematic experience as you got with the other movies because it's a holiday movie. So I think they had a lot more fun with that because of that, because they know they can do these things and not take themselves seriously and it'll still work out well because it's a holiday movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a couple for Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a few that said the Batman the, that was I remember when I heard Robert Pattinson was cast as Batman I was like uh but watching I was like oh my gosh this is really good so this, they made a good choice with that um, somebody else agreed with you Top Gun Maverick and someone has said everything everywhere all at once and that's another uh, one that I I need to watch yes I know and I just found out that it is on Paramount Plus I think and I think okay. we have that so we're going to try to watch that here pretty soon so uh, least favorite movies. We had someone say men, which I haven't heard before. I don't know what that is. I've never, I've not heard of that one. Yeah. The other I. So, uh, oh, sorry. I, I wish I knew it, but I don't. Um, we had a couple of people who said Morbius. Uh, one person said the Marvel legend, Dr. Michael Morbius movie. <laughs> uh, one person said it's gotta be Morbius, right? This is Kevin. This is how bad that movie is. I'm telling uh, you, I will have to check it out. <laughs> Um, and then one person said Thor Love and Thunder uh, was their least favorite movie this year. So um, I will I will say that Thor Love and Thunder wasn't as good as I was hoping it to be because um, right. I honestly thought it was going to be the biggest movie of the year. Mm-hmm. But word of mouth, I think like about I mean, they leaned way too far into the slapstick comedy. Right. Um, and I, I think that was a mistake. But there were some really great parts of it. I mean, I love the black and white cinematography. Oh yeah. Um, and some of the, some of the other stuff I thought was really, really great. Right. Um, I wanted to share this because um, when else am I going to get to have a platform to like give an opinion on um, <laughs> one of the things, one of the better movies that I watched this year was a movie called vengeance. And uh-huh. I watched it on Peacock not too long ago. And it's from BJ Novak, who was on um, the office right uh and he wrote and directed this movie um and it's it's a really good kind of like noir crime thriller where Mm -hmm. he he plays somebody that's trying to start a a true crime podcast out in the the west texas desert Mm -hmm. um but there's there's a performance by ashton kutcher in this movie Mm -hmm. that is to me award worthy like i was blown Uh away with like the depth and it's a supporting role he's maybe in the movie for 10 minutes total right but he's fantastic you completely forget that he's the punked guy no um, kidding. and i i don't know i've been i've been waiting like a month and a half to have somebody to talk about this with. But, <laughs> so if you're out there if you're out there listening check out vengeance because uh it's very good and you'll be pleasantly surprised with ashton kutcher yeah i'm gonna have to do that now yeah uh, all right, so let's talk about TV shows. What was your favorite TV show of the year? Um, once again, I had a I had a couple that I had to like narrow it down to mm-hmm. um, because, of course, like after like three and a half years of waiting, we got Stranger Things four. Yeah, and n- I just there's nothing like Stranger Things on television. Yeah, like the way that they tell like um, like parallel storylines that that seem to be like working their way through a maze and they all end up in the middle at the mm-hmm. same time. It's just such a rewarding TV experience, especially when you can binge watch it and you don't have to wait. Right. Um, well, at least, you know, they, they split it in half still, but yeah. Right. Well, I, I purposely <laughs> didn't watch it until all the episodes <laughs> until were available. <laughs> Like is it the first you are half stubborn came, like that? You're the like, first I'm half waiting. came out. Well, it came out in May. It came out in May, and like it's the end of the school year. I was really busy, so yeah. I just waited till July. Yeah. Um, and I'll give mad props to the second season of Only Murders in the Building. Yes. Because that was my favorite last year, and I really, really loved it. But yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the superhero theme, and I'm gonna go with the boys because oh yeah, I have really grown to love um the characters in that show. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. I, I wish the the Marvel shows or the or the the Disney Star Wars shows, with the exception of the Mandalorian, could like develop like how to develop a character the way that they have. I mean, right. they have they have five or six really important characters, and they they tell their backstory, and you understand their motivation, you understand their highs and lows with them because you're right there along for the ride, mm-hmm. and it's 
like when you when you're watching something that's a little bit of a slow burn right it it, it really really like pays off for you to, to build those characters that way right um, i will admit and say that i i did not watch the house of the dragon or anything yeah, so there might that. be some there might be some other things that are out there i I didn't watch Andor. Uh, I was saving that for the mm-hmm. for the Christmas break. So mm-hmm. there might be some other things that were out there that were um, that were great. But right. for me, the boys was the was the pinnacle of yeah. TV watching for the year. Yeah, you know, and, and the boys, I like some of the story tell. I, I like a lot of the storytelling elements and some of the things that they've done. It gets a little too graphic for me, which is why it's probably never going to be like one of my favorites, because mm-hmm. there's some things like it's one of the few shows that have actually made me physically repulse. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and I don't get repulsed that easily. And, and so it's just it's a little too graphic for me. Um, but you're right. Like this year, there's a lot of great shows, because in addition to all the ones that you said, there was also Wednesday that came out, I thought mm-hmm. was a great adaptation of the Adams family. Uh, we had Obi-Wan Kenobi that came out this year. Like there was just a lot of great shows that came out this year. Um, for me, I'm going to kind of straddle two of them um, because I they're my favorite for two different reasons. One is the Sandman series from Netflix, okay. because I think that is probably one of the best comics adapted TV series or film that I've ever seen. Um, because I read the Sandman last year when I got the first volume of the trade paperback and absolutely loved that story. And I think they did a fantastic job of translating that and capturing both a lot of the panels and the story that's in it, but also the spirit of it. If they had to make some sort of adaptation, I think they just did a fantastic job. And so it's definitely one of my favorites. The other one that is also my favorite is a show called Legend of Vox Machina. Have you ever mm-hmm. heard of this? No, I've seen previews for it on Amazon Prime and I've always wanted to like watch it. But it's like one of those things that like I got to get into it by myself. And yeah, nobody nobody else is going to watch it with me. But yeah, no, <laughs> it looks it looks super good. Yeah, I'll watch it with you. We could do a little watch party and do that watch party. Yeah. My, so this is how I found out about Legend of Vox Machina is um, I was on Amazon Prime and it popped up as a suggestion. So this is one of the few times where I'm glad that Amazon popped a suggestion to me because I was like, mm-hmm. this looks interesting. Like it's like a fantasy based type of animated show. And, you know, I, I always have like kind of an interest in checking out fantasy based things, watched it. And it's just been one of my favorite ones so much that it's based on a comic book that Critical Role has created. And I got the volume of um, issues that they've released and everything. And it's just a it's it's a funny it's definitely an adult theme show. I think it's TBMA, but it's very funny. It's very um, you know, action packed, compelling, great story. Uh, it's just one of those things that I never heard of it until Amazon suggested that. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. I'm just like, why is this not known a lot more? So I'm like really wanting a second season because I thought it was such a great show. So if you have not heard of Legend of Vox Machina, it is on Amazon. Check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's, it's a really good show and I really enjoy it. So, um, Least favorite TV show for you. You mentioned one. Of, you mentioned my least favorite when you were talking about some of the great shows. Which one is that? So here's the thing. Remember that I don't I don't watch. I don't spend a lot of time watching stuff. So I got to tell you, it was the least favorite of the ones I watched. Yeah. And and that was the Obi-Wan. Um, oh, show. really? Yeah. I just I felt like they once again, they're trying to sh- trying to shoehorn more story into um like what's been around for ages Uh and and where the story what the story did where the story was at just didn't make any sense to me like having watched like star wars like Uh like that that he knew that like he knew leia and like it just it just it caused more questions than it answered Uh um and the the i thought that the the whole like bringing um what's his name back to play Anakin Skywalker <laughs> and he looks Christian Haydenson. Yeah. And he's supposed to look like 17 and he looked 40. Yeah. Like, I, there was just, there was too much. They did right. too much. Well, they had like three different people besides him playing Darth Vader too. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> that was the other interesting thing as well. So, but let's preface this by saying like, again, this is just based on what you've seen and not like all the ones out there. 
Yeah, I mean, if it's something's bad, I won't watch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I'm just saying right now that don't be surprised if if people you know reach out to me. They're like, I'm glad Kevin's on a co-host. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I know it's just because I know like, there's a lot of people who absolutely love that series. So that was really surprising. So wasn't for um, me. So but that's the thing. That's what I, that's what I'm striving to be now. Like, yeah, the things that I watched that I didn't like and I, I'm just going to be like, mm, that's not for me and right. and move yeah. on instead of like bringing bringing my toxic energy to like the <laughs> Reddit or Twitter. Be like, yeah, right. I just let it and it's go. not like you ever went on and bashed the show or anything like no, that. I didn't. You know? yeah. I, no, I just it, I just it was just like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I was disappointed. <laughs> yeah. And I get that. So. Um, I did not have a show that was my least favorite, to be honest. Like I, I, I really struggled with this cause I can't think of one that I watched this year was not good. So that one was, is blank for me. <laughs> um, for our listeners, favorite TV show, one's called yellow jackets, which I don't know if I've heard that one before or not. Yeah. That's a, a showtime show. I've, I've seen previews for that and I heard it was really, really good. Uh-huh. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's about a group of women who are like, get in a plane crash in the wilderness or something they get stranded in the wilderness as like teenagers and they oh, may have resorted right. they may have resorted to like cannibalism right and, and then this is the show takes jumps back and forth between like when they were teens and when now they're adult women and um, yeah kind of like coming to terms with with it all yeah it's like a lord of the flies type of thing a little bit on. yeah yeah um someone said doom patrol which i I will say this. I haven't watched the latest season, but I never really got into it when the first season came out. So uh, and I haven't. Oh, what? man, I'm trying to think now. Wait a second. I'm th- I was like, I was like, I don't I haven't watched much of the D.C. or been excited about um, much of the D.C. And this has been a long year. But did Peacemaker come out in 2022? It did in January 2022. Oh, man, I'm going to have to change my answer because I loved that show. <laughs> that show was amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I changed my answer. It's Peacemaker. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, let's still, <laughs> it's still pretty. It's still pretty graphic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you, as being like an educator and working with like all different types of kids, there's so much of what. um what John Cena brought to that character Mm -hmm. that like, you kind of felt like he was like on the spectrum for like autism just because of his hyper fascination with, with certain certain things. things. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I'm, I was blown away. Like that's another, that's another like major, like somebody should be given award. I mean, they should give John Cena awards for just being an amazing person. But like, like his acting in that show was, was second to none. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, And like I said, there's just so many, great shows and peacemaker is definitely up there for me as well too as a really good show um but yeah and, and that's actually a few people that said peacemaker was their favorite show this year as well um stranger things four uh someone said the final season of better call Saul, which i've never seen that or breaking bad i know yeah. people judge me for that um jack reacher which I have not watched, but something I definitely want to watch because I've heard good things about that. Jack Reacher is really good, and it might have been on my list had I watched past episode two because I watched (laughs) the first episodes and I was like, oh, Kathy would really like this. So I'll wait and watch it with her. And then we never got back to it. So (laughs) yeah, Yeah, I've I've heard nothing but good things about it. Yeah, we did. We did just get a TV. Kathy got me a TV for Christmas for our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And so like now we can I can watch like TV MA stuff like and not have to worry about where the kids are at because <laughs> i can shut in. my door right yeah and then uh we had one person say she hulk was their favorite show as well um and then least favorite tv show someone said andor uh tales of the walking dead which i did not realize there's more spinoffs of the walking dead someone said i only watch good tv although blockbuster on netflix was a bit disappointing <laughs> um don't have one one. that's one i was uh, like excited for until i started hearing like overwhelming negative reviews about it i i thought it was it was fine like it wasn't like great television but i didn't think it was bad either i think it was just um i I think it suffered from it felt like a bunch of other shows that's out there as well too so like like someone had compared it as it's a um superstore tv show that's based in blockbuster like it was very much that kind of 
feel. And I think people are just kind of not into that, but it had a great cast. And I thought it was, I thought it was good. Like it wasn't, you know, as great as some of the other mockumentaries are out there. And this one, it wasn't even mockumentary actually. Right. Um, it wasn't as good as the other ones are out there by any means, but um, it definitely wasn't bad in my opinion. So um, someone said, don't have one. Someone said book of Boba Fett. And I do appreciate that. They said that it premiered December 29th, but they're still counting it because the rest of the episodes came out this year. So I, I'll give them that. Um, and then yeah, someone said, so- Cause when I, when I, when me and Madden were talking about our list, I was like, man, my favorite, favorite comic book movie for this year. Can I say, can I say, um, uh, Spider-Man no way home because like it came out at the end of the year and Matt was like, no, that was your, that was your favorite last year. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's just reusing it again. Yeah. yeah. Cause I mean, I, I, I mean, it came out so, so close to new year's or I saw it so close to new year's that, right. That was what, that was what the way I was feeling about it. Yeah. And then the last one someone shared was American Horror Story, New York City. So which again, I haven't seen that one either. So uh all right. So your favorite MCU or DCEU project. So this could be a film, this could be uh um, right, a I'll, series. I'll, I'll keep the boys as my favorite TV show, and then I'll move Peacemaker into my favorite like <laughs> MCU or DCEU right. project. And I've already explained uh my love for it but it it was just really really well done and and that's what makes me excited about like james gunn um becoming the creative head of the the dc universe right Um, yeah um barring peacemaker my my answer would have been she hulk um okay and i i i would have preferred to be able to binge watch it because i laughed my butt off at so much of it oh yeah it was it was genuinely funny to me yeah and the criticism that most people like found in it was the stuff that I uh, loved about it. Right. Um, I was glad to see that they used um, Daredevil for more than just a tease. <laughs> uh, and but Me there was too. <laughs> even like the fourth wall, even like the fourth wall breaking and the and the weird ending and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, it just made me excited to see what they would do next with with her. Right. Um, and like, I I don't think as many I don't think as many actresses get the same sort of credit for being like charismatic in a character mm-hmm. um, uh, as as male characters do because there's just there's just a lot of like um, the one that the one that jumps out to me is uh, you know Ryan Reynolds um, and he's because he's so he's so good looking and he he's a smooth talker right um what's the ryan gosling too like oh uh, yeah yeah like um what's i'm trying to i i was gonna say it's one of my favorite movies but i can't um think of the name of it but the one with him and steve carroll in it um oh yeah uh crazy stupid love yes that's he's so so yeah. charming in that movie yeah and even as like a kind of a like a uh like a bad he's not like a, the greatest guy at the beginning, but you see the way his character evolves when he falls in love. Right. Um, anyway, those, those types of roles that are written for men and they exude like a lot of charisma. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think, I don't think women get recognized for that as much. And I thought the, the lady who plays um, she Hulk is it, it's Tatiana Manzali. Right. I think, right. I don't think I'm saying that right. Um, she was just like, maybe it was the fact that she was talking directly to you Mm -hmm. or that she was so relatable as Jennifer Walters and so cool as, as she Hulk, like you just wanted to be friends with her. You wanted to hang out with her. Um, like I like my women smart. So like, that wasn't like a (laughs) turnoff for me. Right. Um, you like them big so they can carry you too. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. So, (laughs) um, yeah, no, I I thought it was I thought it was a great show. Yeah, yeah, no, and I love that show as well too. I thought, um, you know, same thing what you said. It's it's um, a lot of the criticism I think was undue, and I think it was it was you know kind of slanted and skewed because I have I've said that Phase Four has been like the biggest risk that they have done with the MCU because they are exploring different types of storytelling that they haven't mm-hmm. before, and I thought that this is a very different kind of story that we haven't seen the mcu where it is a you know comedy that has some you know law legal drama in it i mean it's not you know foolproof 
this is exactly how the law system works or anything like that, but they had fun with it, you know? So um, for me, my favorite projects, and again, I'm going to straddle between two because these are two different reasons. Um, the Batman I thought was a phenomenal movie. I, I really love that. I saw that in theaters, I think three or four times. And um, I really loved a lot of things about it from the storytelling and the writing to the cinematography, to the audio, um, even with the stuff that had issues with it was just peanuts compared to all the great things that are about it. Um, and so I'm really excited to hear that uh, the Batman is going to stay in the DC universe for DC studios and it's going to remain untouched and all that, because I think they have something great going on with that series. Um, the other thing that's one of my favorites is um, the Marvel special presentation werewolf by night. Did mm-hmm. you see that this year? I did. I, and I really liked that one as well. Yeah. I thought it was a, that was something that after I watched it, I said, I am sold on this special presentation idea because at first I was, I was kind of waffling between, you know, why do a special presentation, either make it a movie or a series why we're doing this. But when they did that with werewolf by night, I thought they did a great job with it. And it's, it was during Halloween. So it had that universal monsters feel mm-hmm. to it. It was filmed in black and white. And, you know, by the end it went to color and really revealed a lot of cool things. Like they had, a very creative way of presenting this. And after watching this, I just remember thinking I am sold on the special presentation idea that I think they can do a lot more stories that doesn't need a full series or movie, but it's something that people would love to see. And werewolf by night is this a prime example of that. And now, you know, guardians of Gal- galaxy holiday special, which we've already right. been introduced to them, but these opportunities of telling the story without having a, you know, full budget, I think, um, is going to be a great way for them to tell these stories and give fans, you know, something that they've been wanting to see on the special on the big screen, but don't have to commit to that sort of thing. I think Werewolf by Night was just a great example of how they can do that and be successful because I've heard nothing but great things with that uh, from other people. And I think that it was just such a mind blowing way of telling a story that we haven't seen before. And that it's self-contained too, you know, Mm -hmm. like if we didn't see them after this, like it's not a big deal because Mm -hmm. it's not affecting the MCU, but it was still really cool. And I think Werewolf by Night just gave everybody a chance to be able to experience a story without it tying to the bigger MCU, which I know some people want it to tie into it, but I don't think it has to, you know, I mean, it's not that every Marvel comic book is tied to all these other series all the time. So I think it's just a really cool way for them to do that. So I, that was my favorite project from uh, MCU was because that's what got me sold on the idea of doing more special presentations. So, yeah. And I think that, I think that it'll be good for the MCU to kind of embrace that uh, more efficient storytelling Mm -hmm. because Cause before, before I left the show, I, I, I know that I made multiple gripes about um, <laughs> some of the series needing to be a movie right? Um, because they, because they just, they put too much filler in um, and you know, you got 45 minutes to tell your story from start to finish. You gotta, you gotta tighten it up. Now I think that they could probably do that with some of the characters that they've already established. Like if mm. moon Knight came back and wasn't um wasn't like a reoccurring like 36 minute episode show that maybe we got two moon night special presentations a year. I would be, I would be okay with that. Um, I think they just, they just, they have to got to figure out where they want to go. And I see them flip-flopping a little bit because, you know, armor wars was supposed to be um, a TV show and now it's back to being a movie Mm -hmm. and I don't know. I just, I think that there's, I think that there's something to like, if like I, I mentioned the boys and I mentioned stranger things like they, they, those, those shows know how to tell a story with multiple characters that weaves together and and gets to the point. Mm -hmm. And some of the Marvel shows I think have, have missed, missed that. And so, or missed the mark on that. Right. So I would, I would definitely love to see them, um, like tighten up the storytelling and have more of those special offerings. Right. Agreed. All right. So what was your least favorite MCU or DCU project? Um, I. Did you not think about this ahead of time? No, I did. I'm just still <laughs> debating it. I, I would say that outside of 
outside of um, Oscar Isaac's performance in Moon Knight, I I I was probably most disappointed in that, and oh, mostly really? mostly because by the end of it, I was no closer to having answers about like who who he really was than the beginning because it 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 was real it was really trippy about like you know what was the actual reality like Mm -hmm. was him being in the hospital reality was him being you know like out and having the adventure reality and some of that stuff was really really well done um the the lady i don't remember the character's name but layla yeah and the costume she had was like maybe one of the best like mcu costumes yet like the Mm -hmm. golden scarab costume was so rad um but i just i guess i didn't know enough about moon knight going into it or coming out of it i i I don't feel like i I knew as much either coming out of it so right um as disappointing as um thor was i only gave up one afternoon for thor (laughs) <laughs> and I waited with I waited with bated breath each week for Moon Knight to come out, and and it was probably a more disappointing experience. Right. Well, and I will say with Moon Knight, uh, I appreciated it because I read the Jason Aaron run of the character before watching the series, and I think they did a great job of translating that idea of of the main character, Mark Spector, which uh, you know in the series it's Stephen, right? Um, mm-hmm on how they didn't know which is real and which isn't and that's how the comic book kind of presented it as well too but if you didn't have that idea ahead of time you could definitely be lost with this i i totally get where you're coming from uh for me my least favorite is actually thor love and thunder and it's not because i hated the movie i actually liked the movie when i think about all the other movies that i saw um that's one that i probably like the least compared to the other ones that is an MCU or DCU. So it's, it's one of those, I agree with you that, you know, did lean into the, you know, slapstick humor a little bit too much that I think, you know, people are probably okay if they didn't have that sort of movie again. Um, and I would be okay with that, I, but I still enjoyed it. It's just when you look at all the other movies and shows and stuff that came out this year, um, I like, I just end up liking those more than Thor mm-hmm. Love and Thunder. So I got you. Yeah. So, but I, I agree with you. There are things I absolutely love about the movie, like the cinematography for when they were fighting on shadow world, Mm -hmm. I thought was fantastic. That was such a great idea and great visual way of doing a battle. That's very different than what we've seen before. Um, There's some just great things about that movie, but again, with everything else, uh, it just, it sits at the bottom for this year. So, yeah. And I, it was the first thing that I, I mean, my new TV, I got a new 4k TV. (laughs) <laughs> like that was the first thing that I flipped on in 4K. Yeah. And it just like it pops off the screen. It's visually, it's very beautiful. Yeah. But um, yeah, like I don't know. It, it, and I, I think it I think it got some flack too for like introducing Jane Foster's Thor mm-hmm. um and then killing her off. Right. Um so but it kind of teased us she's coming back. Uh yeah, but you know, I don't think knows? she's gone. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, well, you know I, the I, other thing. You know the other thing that like cheesed me off. Like if we're talking about being disappointed, <laughs> was the sure. was the was the the commercials and the trailers like leading up to Doctor Doom. I mean Doctor um, Strange, Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, mm-hmm. and then like they made Wanda the bad guy. Yeah, like, I, I agree. I was like so disappointed in that. Yeah, um, like that woman has suffered enough. Can we can yep. we just get her some therapy? <laughs> I mean, I I think Marvel just needs to redeem. I don't want to say redeem her. I think they need to redeem themselves and giving her a good story because she just seems like she's a punching bag for the MCU. And I think everybody is just sick and tired of seeing her being treated as a villain given her circumstances and and everything else. And so I think you know we're all ready for her to not be a villain anymore and to stay as a permanent uh good person (laughs) yeah so uh listeners favorite mcu dcu project she hulk Mm -hmm. uh one person said james gunn new vision for dc films uh the batman got a lot of votes uh wakanda forever 
And Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness was someone's favorite. And then the least favorite is Thor, Love and Thunder, the Batman. So the Batman has showed up on both favorites and least favorite. Uh, someone said Eternals and any sequel. So the person hates this movie so much that they've already said that any sequel of Eternals is terrible. <laughs> um, and then other people have said uh, Morbius, Multiverse of Madness, Thor, Love and Thunder. Um, someone said I didn't see Suzanne, but there's a reason. And um uh, I'm assuming yeah. that reason is because it hasn't come out yet. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was supposed to come That's out. That's actually this month. one of the things yeah. that I was most excited for. I know. Um, but DC just keeps pushing all of their stuff back. Yep. Like, I feel like at this point we should have had Aquaman 2, Shazam and the flash. And like, hopefully all of those are coming out within the next year, but I think they are like, I, I think they're going to be releasing them like, firmly and then after that abandoning once, it all together like <laughs> yeah so i think they're just going to smash it all to smithereens and say okay we're doing you know we're, we're starting restarting over it. Yeah. yeah um all right so i know in the past you have said that sometimes you don't have a chance to read any comics or graphic novels and this is one of the topics we have on there did you have any favorite and least favorite comics or graphic novels for this so, year Nothing that nothing that that um, came out this year. OK, but I will say that um, I completely consumed um, the entire run of Matt Fraction's sex criminals over the summer. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. And it is like if you've never read it, it is a phenomenal um, it's a phenomenal story. And it starts off with a fairly fun premise um a, about two people that can freeze time when they orgasm um <laughs> and then they they decide to rob banks in order to raise money for uh something and it 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 veers hard right from that into a, a, a relationship book mm -hmm. and reading it and reading the dialogue between the two of them um and the experience they had like really did a, a number on me like especially with like the way i communicate with my wife and it made me it made me like grow to appreciate my wife even more mm -hmm. um and 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 not take for granted like the 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 relationship that we've built and how like even after like we're gonna we're gonna when by the time this comes out we will have celebrated our 17th wedding anniversary um Yay. but but that that you gotta you have to continue to um like like build build on it. It can't just be um you know the the point of any relationship can't be singular and focused. And so mm -hmm. um it was a it was a moving experience for me. And it was one that, you know, you talk about a book called Sex Criminals and you expect it to be, you know, something completely <laughs> different. And right. and I, I like heist stories, so that was what drew me um to it uh mm -hmm. but it yeah it was it was really exceptional so that would that would be the highlight of my year i didn't i didn't have a good year for um for reading comics and and i think i i know i took a picture of it and sent it to you that i got um the the last ronin for my birthday like i got the yes. hard copy and i still haven't read it yet you gotta read it man i I'm know, telling you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um for me this year Dark Knights of Steel from DC Comics, written by Tom Taylor. Have you heard about the series? Um, does it? I guess does it follow up like the 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 Dark Knights that uh, Snyder and uh, Capullo did? Or no idea. Was it metal, dark metal. I don't remember. But it, go ahead. Yeah. So this one is kind of a what if story where uh, what if Superman and his parents landed in earth in like 1500s um ad in the medieval times basically okay and all the characters from dc universe are in this time period as well so you have batman that's a knight that um is kind of the i want to say general necessarily but is definitely a um leader soldier for the um for the house of l because the 
um, Superman's parents are, you know, king and queen of this area, basically. So you have him and he still have his Robins that are like his spies that he sends out all the time. Um, Wonder Woman is still there. And, you know, in um, uh, what's the name of that? They that they live Th- the Mascaria. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they have all these characters from the DC universe that are in this time period. And it was just a really fun way of retelling a story with your favorite characters um harley quinn is in it as a I, I don't know what exactly her role is i think she's like in charge of the prison for the house of l's um you know and poison ivy is the you know the person that's in in the forest that controls all the plants and stuff like that and so it's it's just a really cool way of telling um a brand new story with these characters in a different setting and have the leisure of telling it how you want without worrying about continuity because there's no continuity with this kind of story um so if you like medieval fantasy type of stories and you like dc this is a really good one to have because not only is that setting really cool but the story is really neat and i think is well done and every issue kind of hint Uh, ends on a cliffhanger um and i'm not going to spoil it for anybody but it's a really good series i think is it a limited run is there an ending to it there is and what's interesting is that it started last year and they um printed all i think like the first issue came out like november december last year Mm -hmm. and they released you know seven issues then they stopped over the summer like they weren't putting anything out and then they picked up again i think last month or October and started releasing it. And I think there's a total of 10 or 12 issues that are okay. coming out, I believe. So it is a limited run. Um, it's not like Superman, Son of Kal-El when people didn't know how many issues are going to be, although now people know, but um, yeah, they definitely had always said that it was going to be, I think 10 or 12 issues. So, but they just took a break for it. So. All right. I'm definitely going to look it up and try to get it when the, when the collected issue comes out. Yes, do it. So and if you're if you're into that, have you ever read Marvel 1602? I have it on my bookmarked. Um, I have not had a chance to read it yet, but I've heard people say kind of the same thing. It's it's the same kind of ideas yeah. as if, if the Marvel universe took place in that year, basically. So and, and Neil Gaiman wrote that. And one of the things that I yeah. love about that story is you come into it pretty clear cut, clear cut who the characters are, like mm-hmm. like Doctor Strange is um in it. Nick Fury is in it. Uh, mm-hmm. Peter Parker is called Peter Parkwad. Um, <laughs> uh, you don't you don't understand who all the characters are right at first. Right. Like you uncover it a little bit at a time, and even some of the characters, like in the twists and turns, are like, "Oh my gosh, that's so and so." I really loved reading that book. Mm-hmm. Now it's almost twenty years old. Um, yeah, but I loved reading that book. Do you have any uh, least favorite comics or graphic novels? uh no i would have to I'd, I'd have had to have read something yeah um <laughs> that i didn't like yeah for me i i usually don't have a comic that i really didn't like but this year i actually read a comic for comic watch i did a review for and it's bat girls okay. um which is unfortunate and I, I think it's because when i went into it one, I, it was issue seven or 11 or something like that. So it's not an issue that um, was from the beginning for me to start with. So I kind of went in blind, not knowing what has happened up until this point. Um, but it definitely read like a teenager, young, not young adult, but what's the, um, I guess young adult is like, you yeah. know, teenager type of genre. Um, it's because it definitely has that high school romance feel to it. The art style, I wasn't a fan of. It had that sort of, you know, the people are colored really nicely, but then the background is like, it's just a solid color with the detail. So you see, you know, a wall with a door and everything, but it's completely purple. Like they did some sort of overlay with it. It, I just, I wasn't a fan of that series, which is a bummer because I had a lot of people say that they really enjoyed that series. But when I read that issue, I'm like, this isn't for me. I'm not enjoying it. So Unfortunately, I was really excited about it because I wanted to read more stories with Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Cain and and Barbara Gordon and all that, but um, that just did not do it for me. So, hopefully, another Batgirl serial come out that I will enjoy. So, um, listeners had shared their favorite ones were Savage Avengers, which David Pepos um, mm-hmm. wrote. He's been on the show. Um, Iron Fist issue one. 
do a power bomb. I've heard a lot of people say it's a really good one. So if you're looking for a new one that's not Marvel or DC, I've heard some great things about that one. You should probably check out. Mm-hmm. Um, Grim from Boom Studios. Clementine Volume 1, which this person said you don't need to read all four of the compendiums of Walking Dead. Um, it's a great spinoff with a good story, characters, and decent art. Um, Eight Billion Genies is another good one that I haven't read, but I've heard so many people talk about it. And Batman Superman World's Finest is another one that someone suggested as well, too. Uh, least favorite, Dark Crisis, Young Justice. Uh, anything Eternals. <laughs> Um, someone said my mutuals only recommend me good comics. A lot of people said they didn't have one, so and I could totally get that because I feel like if it wasn't for bad girls, I'd probably say the same thing, right? Um, The Closet and then Joker by Tinian. Uh, I think that's James Tinian the fourth, if I remember correctly. So, right, yeah, and see, okay. and I keep up with a lot of this stuff. I just, I don't know, don't my, ADHD, read it. my ADHD is works in such a way that like. I have a hard time like taking time for myself. Mm-hmm. So like reading comics or reading anything would mean coming home and, and being isolated. Um, whereas like I'm, I'm away from my family all day and I want to come home and spend time with them. Mm-hmm. And so it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to get into now that being said, we probably all could, could benefit from like picking one day a week. And that's, that's the day that we all sit and read together instead of doing something different. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, now let's get into games. Favorite game that you have from this year? Video game? Any game. Um, I, I kind of made it generic, so that way it could be video game, it could be board game, it could be mobile games, just any sort of game that may have came out this year. If you don't have one, that's fine. I, I don't, because I I mean, I played NBA 2K23, I mean, 22 with, with Madden a lot over the summer and uh-huh. beat, beat him handily. Uh <laughs> There was, proud of that. I love, yeah, because I love, I love the fact that they have like a street ball mode where you play at like the park and you can go like two on two or one oh, on that's one. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and so like when when I just beat him mercilessly like over and over and over <laughs> again, we we finally I I finally was like, look, I will handicap myself and I will only be like the biggest, slowest like foreign <laughs> white guys out yeah. there. And um, you can be whoever you want. And I still beat him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He he had that coming. <laughs> so, Sounds like a very th- therapeutic experience for you. Yeah, it yeah. is. I mean, like, that's the like, like, there's not a lot of stuff that I could beat him at. Like, I don't think I could go out there and beat him one on one in real basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I can take him on at, at the video games. Right. So for, for me this year, it's uh, Teenage Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, which I really enjoyed because it's a new kind of game, but it's definitely in the style that we grew up with. Okay. And so it's been a lot of fun. Um, hard mode is definitely intense. It's definitely hard, like it suggested. So, um, but it's just, it's really fun because there's a lot of Easter eggs in there. Um like I said, it's very similar to the arcade game that we grew up playing all the time. And it's just kind of a really fun, nostalgic game to play. And you get to see all these different characters and bosses. And you get to play not only as the four turtles, but you can also play as um, April O'Neil. And you can play as Splinter. Now, my biggest gripe is I don't know why we couldn't play as Casey Jones in that game. Because right. I think that would have been awesome. And that would have made a lot of sense. But... I think the, um, most of the news I heard about this game was the gripes that why couldn't we be Casey Jones? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and I love that you could be Splinter and I love that you could be April Neal, but I think it would have made sense for them to also include Casey Jones since he is literally a vigilante. Right. You know, and so, um, yeah, but who knows? Maybe that's the, what the sequel is going to bring is they're going to add Casey Jones as a playable character. Um my least favorite get game this year was Gotham Knights, unfortunately. Um, when I first played it, I enjoyed it, but it got to a point where the user interface was not great of an experience to know what you're supposed to do in the game. So there's a lot of times I didn't know what I was supposed to do to move on to the next mm-hmm. part of the story. Um, there was a lot of button smashing that it just kind of got boring at some point. It wasn't like Arkham Knight where... 
you slowly build up your powers like you did, but it was very slow and it was just still, I was just smashing a bunch of buttons. I felt like there was no strategy or anything like that. Like you would for, you know, Arkham Knight or Spider-Man or anything like that. And I paid, I think $70 for that game. It just wasn't worth it. And then a month later, not even a month later, I think like two or three weeks later, it went on sale for like 40 bucks or something like that. I'm like, I would have paid 40 bucks and got mad, but I'm even more pissed because I paid 70 bucks and then they, uh, they dropped the price after that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, listeners had said their favorite games were the quarry, uh, Pokemon Scarlet, which I haven't heard of before. Uh, multiverses. Have you heard of that or played that? Uh, we've downloaded it. I think Madden's played it a little bit, but I haven't had a chance to get on it. Yeah, it's fun. It's basically Smash Brothers with the DC and Warner Brothers characters, characters, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I played a little bit. I thought it was it was fun. I just haven't got back to play to play it again. Um, God of War Ragnarok. I have not played that one, but I've heard a lot of people saying this story is great and really enjoyed it. Overwatch 2, Midnight Suns. I got to say, I am not interested in Midnight Suns because it acts like a mobile game, but you're playing on a console, and that's just not my sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, and then last is Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. Uh, least favorite games. Someone said they barely play anything, which is fine. Um, Mario and the Rabid Spark of Hope, which I haven't heard of before. Someone said multiverse is post beta. So the person who said multiverse is they liked it when it was beta, but then post beta, they did enjoy it. So it's on their list both times. Um, the new rogue game, um, SAS, extremely disappointing. And then two people said Gotham Knights as well, too. So, uh, I will say one of the things that I liked playing the most in, in 2022 was right before school started, we had a, like we had a staff outing at like main event Mm -hmm. and they have a game that is like, um, combines connect four with shooting basketballs. So like when you're, when you're playing your, like when it's your, when it's blues turn, you have to shoot a basketball and, Mm -hmm. and make it to the spot where you want it to go. And it doesn't always go where you want it to. Um, it was a really, really fun game to play with like your best friend, but like I could see it like ruining relationships. Yeah. Um, because like it's it's very competitive and it's it's so simple. I don't know why it took so long for it to become a thing, but yeah. it it was a lot of fun to play. Oh, well, good. Um, our last category, the WTF moment of the year. What is your moment of the year that you're I'm just, just like... gonna say anything Kanye did? <laughs> You know what? I think that, yeah, I think, I think everyone's, that should be everyone's answer. That's mm-hmm. a good one. <laughs> yeah. Like um, I, I, there was a, it was like a, a week or two ago where I was teaching, I'm teaching a class. And one of the things that we're learning about is video games. And I have an assignment where they, they answer a couple of questions to develop their own like video game character. Mm-hmm. And then they have to like draw the video game character. And one of my students thought it would be a good idea to have like a video game where Hitler is the main character. And oh I was gosh. like, do you, do you not watch the news? Like this isn't funny. And he yeah. was like, well, well, if Kanye likes him and I'm like, Nope, say no more. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Yeah. Like anytime, See, yeah. anytime somebody who is, who has a platform where a lot of people listen to him and mm-hmm. they say either ignorant or negligible or dangerous things through ignorance or negligibility yep. um, negligence um it's it, it irks me yeah it, so yeah those those kinds of things were um were debt would definitely be up there yeah no i agree it's just i mean this is why people got kicked off of twitter and see what's happening now. <laughs> yeah so. i'm still debating my my long-term presence on twitter yeah yeah no, i get it, it. Um, for me, th- there's been a few. I'm going to just kind of say some honorable mentions. Um, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. I remember I was on a, a flight when that happened. And then when we landed, that's all like anyone was talking about. And it was just, it was just the oddest thing, right? Especially so when you strange. rewatch it. Yeah. Like Will was, was laughing and then yeah. all of a sudden got up and went and slapped the guy. 
it, yeah, it it made no sense to me. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone, and and then it, it just sparked a whole debate about you know who was in the right and who was in the wrong, and and everything. It was just kind of a just a surreal moment of of what is happening right mm-hmm. now, you know, not just with will smith and chris rock and the oscars and all that but just uh the entire like world and and society and, and debating this stuff which is i'm not saying there's anything wrong with debating it but it was just really interesting to see what people were arguing about and what they're arguing for and everything and just so many sides of the same coin that was appearing in some of these discussions so um Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds doing Deadpool 3 and Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. That announcement was probably like like just the highlight of um like being surprised about something during oh, the year. I know. You know and, and I'm so glad that that's how we found out because I'm sick and tired of things kind of getting spoiled for us, but yeah. I remember like we all freaked out when they made that announcement. It was such a I mean such a Ryan Reynolds way of doing it, but mm-hmm. I, you know, we've been talking about how we wanted to see Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and Hugh Jackman as Wolverine because it got teased so mercilessly in the Deadpool movies mm-hmm. that we were just like, we didn't think it was going to happen again. Cause Hugh Jackman said he was done with Wolverine. And so this was just out of left field all went crazy for it. And it's, it's still surreal to me. Like I, I'm not going to believe it until it actually happens. You know, it's just, it's just insane. But we had talked about this moment early on the show, and my WTF moment of the year is Bob Chapek getting fired. Oh, yeah. Because it is, first of all, we're WTF, all... you mean, by WTF, you mean, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what that means. Well, I mean, because we're all happy with it, right? Like, we've talked about how we have not liked him being in charge because he's changed disney so much that it's just the, the parks isn't magical anymore it, there, there wasn't a whole lot of thing it just felt like it was becoming another corporation as opposed mm-hmm. to what experience they provided for um the fans and everything and so we've all griped about him and wanted to see him gone and so when he actually did get fired we are all, all excited about it i mean you and i were texting each other about it um but it was just a weird situation because it was done on a sunday night at like 9 p.m apparently Bob didn't even know that was happening until he saw it on social media earlier, like by two months, the board just, of directors it, approved it, an extension yeah. on his contract. So it's just none of this made sense in terms of why he got fired now, you know? And so it's just, I don't know if we'll ever find out that reason. You know, I know they put out reasons out there, but it's always, you know, kind of a, you know, front facing PR type of thing and not necessarily what actually happened behind the scenes, but I'll, I'll never understand, you know, why or how that happened unless somebody comes up and and say what happened. But, yeah, that one was just kind of out of left field for me. So um, yeah, I'd have to agree with it. That's that's definitely up there. Yeah. 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 Um, listeners have said James Gunn running the DCU now, which that was another uh, pleasant mm-hmm. surprise. Uh, random guy sneaking on stage for Elden Ring at the Game Awards. Have you heard about this? No. This guy, I guess, came on the stage and said that he wanted, what was the exact word? I forget the exact word. I'm going to butcher this, but he said that, you know, I want to thank, um, you know, my Jewish rabbi, Bill Clinton. <laughs> I recognize him. And and everyone was just like, what, what is that about? Like, it's just the weirdest thing. So um, Morbius going back to theaters for a release. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Uptown Funk dance sequence in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, someone else said James Gunn becoming in charge of DC, uh, going to comic cons and buying books. And then at the next booth, they had the same book for cheaper. My friend, that happens a lot. And you're going to be sorely disappointed when you go again and see that it happens all the time. (laughs) Um, the Will Smith slap. Yeah. That scene in the season premiere of the boys, which I, I'm not going to say what it is, but I think we all know what it is. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name. And I don't know anything about this. So I'm just going to mention this. Um, Milo Yanopoulos, which I know who he is. I just, I just don't know mm-hmm. how to pronounce his last name. Potentially engineering the destruction of the Republican Party. I, I don't know what that is. I haven't heard anything about this. So I can't comment on that. So, yep, I'm, I'm out of the loop on that. Yeah, same here. So, all right. So that is 2022 in a review 
We've hit all of our, you know, favorite, least favorite things with movies, TV shows, games, MCU, DCU stuff. Looking ahead to 2023, Kevin, what are you looking forward to the most? If I'm going to be honest, the the Marvel Universe, like getting to the point. <laughs> <laughs> because so much of what they've done, the, and I remember, I guess we weren't so focused on this when when Iron Man and Iron Man 2 were out like in the early days of phase right. one. Right. But like it seems now that they're doing a lot of like foundational work for something big to come later. Mm-hmm. But it's there's not there's not been enough like big reveals or teases or whatnot to like uh, couple that with the fact that like in terms of like the quality of the movies, phase four seemed to be the weakest. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just kind of hope that they get to the point where something pays off soon. Right. Yeah, and I think they will. It's 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 one of those things where, you know, just like you said, it it all seems like it's separate. And maybe, you know, it is. And and that's how some of the movies were, you know, even when we saw Thanos and everything, you know, we were still figuring out, you know, how this worked. And a lot of people had said Infinity War is probably going to be coming. And of course, that's what happened and all that. But um, but yeah, I, I think we're, you know, we're ready to kind of see the whole story moving forward that we got the introduction to the new characters. Now we're ready to kind of see, you know, the story move forward cohesively as yeah. a whole with everybody. Like the chess so. pieces are on the board now. Let's yeah. make some moves. Right. Exactly. So um, for me this year or for 2023, I am going to do more of a focus on doing different cosplays. I've been doing the same couple of ones for the last couple of years now, Bane and Kingpin, because they're easy and I pull it off really well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm going to do a couple of new ones. I'm going to do Mr. Freeze, which I've been talking about for a while, but I want to do it this year. Um, Darkwing Duck and uh, Daredevil. I'm going to try to do those three this year. Um, and I'm also looking forward to seeing how Disney is going to come out of the ashes from Bob J. Peck and with Bob Iger leading them. You know, I, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing Disney hopefully getting back to how it was pre uh, J. Peck. And hopefully just kind of get back to how things were, you know, pre COVID and all that as much as possible. So, um, so that's, that's 2022 and what we're looking forward to 2023 um, listeners had said what they're looking forward to is going to the New York comic con guardians of the galaxy three, which I think we're all, you know, very excited mm-hmm. about that. And Ant-Man and the wasp on mania. We're all looking forward to that. Um, someone said a better NYCC in 2023, um, more comics, more movies, more TV shows and more video games. I mean, he's going to say no to that. Right. Um, Lazarus planet, which I think might be a comic book series, but I can't remember if it is or not. Um, sins of sinister is a comic book series, dawn of DC and someone is getting married next year. So that's very exciting. So, um, let me see if I can figure out. Who's getting married? You know, it says eight responses. I'm looking through this Google form to see if I can figure out um, who said this here. Let me go ahead and go to the very last one. Um, you know, I'll I'll make sure to cut this stuff out in the episode. Uh, Chris Tolley's getting married next year. He's a friend of ours on Instagram, uh, Spectacular CT. So congratulations, Chris. I'm very excited I, for you. That's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. So I always just thought he was from Connecticut. Well, I mean, like, he might be too. C, that's what CT stood for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be just a you know happy happenstance that maybe yeah. his initials are CT and he's from Connecticut. So <laughs> I think he is like somewhere on the East Coast. I don't know where exactly he's at though. So yeah, um, I, I hope that next year when we do this, number one, this is what I'm going to do. I'm making a New Year's resolution right now uh-huh. to actually keep track of the things that I've watched, so that like letterbox. I'm going to keep like a, I'm going to keep like a journal or something. <laughs> There's an app called letterbox that you can okay. track all the movies you watch, rate them, do reviews and stuff like that. A lot of people are using that. So okay, you should I'll check look that into out. that. And then yeah. hopefully, hopefully um, what I'm looking forward to most a year from now is um, we've already talked about taking the great American road trip to uh, from our house in Texas to Disneyland. Yes. Um, so 2024, fingers crossed. Yes. We're we're going to Disneyland. And visiting Avengers Campus. That's right. 
Uh, let, right. I mean, let's be real. That's the only reason why we're going to Disneyland is because of Avengers Campus. <laughs> yeah, because you can't get it. You can't get it. I mean, that's definitely where I'm. What I'm most interested is that in Cars Land. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that too. Because yeah. Disney World doesn't have that, which is weird. No. But but like um, I'm such an imagine imagineering nerd um, <laughs> that like I love the the stuff that goes into like making things. And right. Cars Land just seems so like just out there and unique. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the episode. Kevin, thanks for coming back and doing a year review. I got to say, I hope next year that you'll come back on more episodes. And I really want to do more Was a Great Worry 8 episodes because I feel like those are a lot of fun. And I want to do more of those with you whenever. I'm going to say right now, I will commit to at least four episodes in 2023. Yes. We We will find the time and do it at least once a quarter. Uh, I would love that. That'd be great. Yeah, we'll start planning that. Like once we're done recording here, I'll I'll start talking to you about what will work for you and all that. So okay. Um, before I let you go, man, where can people find you online? Oh, uh, or um, if you don't want them to find you online, just say no. Nope. <laughs> yeah, currently, currently I'm on Twitter and Instagram, but like I'm not super active because, uh, well, I mean Instagram, it's a stall world. There's um underscores in there, but it's a stall world. Uh, and then on Twitter, it's Hero City Kevin. Um, but that's yeah, like I just I'm not very active right now. I'm not I'm not I don't have a podcast to plug anymore. So, <laughs> right. Well, I'll make sure to link those uh, accounts in the show notes, though, so that way yep, people won't follow you. They can do that. So, all right, man. Well, thanks for coming back on the show, and I am excited to have you on more episodes later this year. So, all right, awesome. It was great right. to be back. Yeah, definitely. And that wraps up another episode of The Caps and Life. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can follow us on social media at Caps and Life. For more information about us and all of our previous episodes, visit thecapsandlife.com. 